Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! That's a solid kingfish right there. <laughs> yeah! Nice dolphin. There we go. That's dolphin trolling for you. Let's do this. Double header! Let's do this. episode we're gonna go over what I consider to be the most productive most effective and basically the best way to fish the Florida Keys patch reefs and that is by trolling them before we get into this stuff if you want to learn more about fishing grow as an angler or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures you can start by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing all right, folks, so like I said, we're going to go over how to troll the patch reefs of the Florida Keys. But before we get into this, of course, you're going to have to know a few things like where to find them. What's the best time of year to fish for them? What exactly are you fishing for? What's going to be the gear to use? What's going to be the bait and the lures that you want to use? And another important thing is, are you allowed to fish here? Monroe County has some selected areas that you cannot fish in. You have to understand where there are protected areas that you just can't go. So I want to start by explaining a little bit about the patch reefs. They are an area located to the east of what is called Hawks Channel. Hawks Channel is a channel that was dug way back in the day. What it does is it allows larger vessels to traverse the area without running aground. So you're going to want to be able to identify Hawks Channel. If we look at Google Earth, you can see it. It's a clearly almost sand-colored line in the grassy shallows. The patch reefs are east of that, about a mile and a half. You want to be able to identify them. There's areas of coral, and it meets sand. You can clearly see this when you're on a boat, too. You're going to have dark areas, and then you're going to have these bright aqua green areas. The dark areas are coral, the bright aqua green is sand. So what you have is sand flats and then these coral beds that rise up. You don't want to go too far and actually end up on the actual reef. You want to stay in these little patchy areas. And again, if we're looking at Google Earth, you can clearly see these. They look like little distinct patches of reef. And then you get out further into the actual reef structure and ledges. So, as I said, you can clearly identify the patch reefs as you are coming up upon them once you head east of Hawks Channel. You're going to be running over sand and all of a sudden you're going to see dark patches of coral heads start to show up. You're going to go from about 12 to 17 feet deep in sand up to about 5 to 6, sometimes 8 feet. Very important in depth when you're trolling. You're not going to want to get out into that 20, 25 foot area of the reef. You're going to want to stay in shallow around the 8 foot, 10 foot, 11, up into 5 and 6 feet deep areas. That is where these fish are going to be hiding. What's going to happen is your sand is going to be about 12 feet deep and you're going to hit these coral heads and patch reefs and the fish congregate around that. Now I say I like to do trolling because the predators are always hunting around here. You can sit there and anchor up and chum and draw in, you know, fish like yellowtail snappers, groupers, and, you know, mackerel here and there. I find you get more desirable fish when you're trolling the patch reefs. So when I'm trolling the patch reefs, I'm not going quite fast, but I'm not going slow. Again, I am enticing the impulse to feed on actively hunting fish. Usually I'm doing between four and six knots. We're hunting out fish like grouper, snapper. They're going to want to see your bait coming. As it passes over these edges of these reefs, the patches, they're going to swim up and they're going to nail it right on top. And the first thing they're going to try to do is run back towards the rocks. So you're going to have to be prepared for this, be vigilant, and be aware when you're getting a strike. Now granted, every once in a while, you are going to get broken off. You're going to get cut off. These fish are going to run you into the rocks. Like I said, the fish we're going after are these more desirable quality size fish. More often than not, if you're trolling, they get pulled away from their rocky shelter and you're able to get the edge on them before they're able to go back entirely in it and hide and wedge themselves in it. So like I said, you're going to lose some fish, but 
you're going to catch some great fish down there. What we're going to end up catching is mutton snapper, grouper. You're also going to be able to troll up yellowtail. Definitely. Yes, yellowtail snapper. And you will catch Ciro mackerel and Spanish mackerel. All of this great fishing doesn't happen all year round. What I've found is that there's a certain time of year where the fish are more actively feeding and not being as aware as to them being hunted. I found that the months between October and March, when the wind's blowing, it's less favorable conditions than heading way offshore. You've got a murky, sandy water. This hides the unnatural look of a lure. Sure, the seas are gonna be a little bumpy, the wind's gonna be blowing, you're gonna be getting sea spray on you, but that's when the fish are gonna bite. So pay attention to that time of year, you know, starting in October, the northeast winds blow. I wanna talk a little bit about what I consider to be the best time of day. What I have found over the years is that the best time of day to fish the patch reefs is early in the morning. If you've got the time and you can stop and just throw a line in and troll over them once, see if you can get into the hookup as you're heading out off the reef, get the excitement going. If you've got people on the boat with you, it's a great thing to do. As the day rolls on, the fish tend to do a little bit more hiding down in the rocks. Now, I'm not saying that they're not going to bite the bigger fish, but they do tend to hide a little bit. The bite does stay fairly hot all throughout the day. Like I said, you're going to troll up little yellowtails. You're going to troll up the smaller mutton snapper. You're going to get fish like yellow jacks. All right, now that we've gone over those few details, I want to go over a little bit about the gear I use to troll the patch reefs. I most definitely use light spinning gear to troll the patch reefs. The lighter the gear, the lighter the line, the more stealthy approach we have. If we're using bigger gear and we're worried about getting all rocked up all the time, we're going to decrease our hookup ratio. Granted, it's sport fishing. It's going to be tough when you get hooked into a big fish that's got a quick place to run and hide. We're going with light spinning gear. Penn Spin Fisher 5500, spooled with 12 pound monofilament on a seven foot Penn Battalion rock. I've taken this thing offshore and caught everything from mahi and sailfish on it, which is why I'm comfortable trolling with it over to patch reefs for these, you know, mutton snapper, grouper, barracudas, mackerel, whatever might hit. And another one of the setups that I use is this, another snapper spinner, Penn Battle 5000. This one is spooled with 12 pound braid and I've got about a 75 foot shot cord, 20 pound Seaguar Red Label fluorocarbon on it. That's what I like to use on top of any monofilament or braid is Seaguar Red Label. Now I've got 12 pound main lines and I just up it a little bit to that 20 pound fluorocarbon. All right, and so now I've mentioned the leader, right? So if you've got monofilament main line, you're gonna want about 10 to 15 feet of fluorocarbon leader. If you've got braid main line, I'd say no less than a 50 foot liter of fluorocarbon. You need that shock absorbency, otherwise you're yanking hooks out of fish's mouths all day. Also, they'll see the break. What's more important than using a fluorocarbon liter over the patch reefs is your attachment. You're not going to want to use a swivel. You're going to want to use the least amount of terminal tackle that you can. So you're going to need to attach your fluorocarbon directly to your line. So if we're using a monofilament main line and a fluorocarbon leader, we're going to tie a spider hitch on our main line and then we are going to attach the fluorocarbon with a knot called a no-name knot. A super solid combination of knots. I use this for offshore trolling. If you're using fluorocarbon and you're directly tying it onto braid, you're going to want to learn how to tie a knot called an Alberto knot. All right, so all this information is good and great now. We now have said, hey, this is where the patch reefs are located. There are a vast stretch of them for miles, endless miles up and down the Keys. Off Key Largo, there's reefs like Higdon's Reef. Down off Cavanier, there's reefs that are actually named like hens and chickens. You can actually look these up if you want to, but I tend to say, hey, I'm going to go and comb this area and just head either north or south and 
figure out where the fish are. That's the beauty of trolling the patch reefs is you're not stuck in one area. Another important thing that you're gonna need to consider is there are buoys that mark where you cannot fish. Now you gotta know what buoys mark what. Some buoys say, hey, there's no lobster traps allowed here. Some buoys say, hey, there's no boats with motors allowed here. Some buoys say there's no anchoring. And some buoys say, hey, no fishing, no matter what. This is a protected area, stay out. Do a little bit of research. You can ask local tackle shops, bother them. Say, hey, I'm confused about where I can and can't fish. They might direct you to a chart that says, hey, these are the areas you've got to stay out of. And that will keep you in compliance should you run into the FWC down there. And they are there everywhere, so you know you don't want to even take a chance breaking the rules. And along with all that goodness too, you're gonna have to watch where these reefs pop up. I'm telling you, you've gotta troll in these shallows. Shallow water trolling, five to six feet. Definitely keep an eye out. If you see breakers happening, I would not go there. That means it's creeping up to around the two to three foot mark. You don't wanna hit a reef. First of all, you're gonna sink your boat. Second of all, you're gonna get a huge fine. So just play it safe, stay within this, five to 10 foot range of where these reefs pop up. Don't go near the breakers. Don't go near markers. Stay clear of them. And that's where the trouble zone is. So play it safe again. So all this is good and great. Now the question is, is well, what do I fish with? What, what's the best lures? Of course, my favorite lure is the white bucktail jig. I've always said this. If I had one lure and one lure only to fish with for the rest of my life doing anything, I'd use this. This is gonna catch you everything over the patch reefs, especially those giant mutton snapper. And you can also use these, squirt squids. Again, you're gonna to wanna to hook them up on light fluorocarbon leader with, you know, probably a single 5.0 J hook. You don't need to use a double hook tandem setup on this. Over the patch reefs, you're pretty much safer using a single hook setup. Gives you a little bit more stealthy approach. And then I said, as the year wanes on, you're gonna get mackerel coming in. That's when you're gonna wanna start busting out lures like this. This is a Clark spoon. This is gonna be your best friend as we head into December and those mackerel start coming in. You'll be able to get them left and right. We're talking Ciro mackerel and we're talking Spanish mackerel. All right, so now that we've gone over all this information, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out onto the boat gonna have a little bit of fun doing some hands-on demonstrations, how to troll the patch reefs, what we're looking for, getting into the bite, and getting some fish on board. So here we go. All right, so we're letting out a couple lines over the patch reefs, some light trolling gear, 12 to 20 pound class spinners. We're gonna be trolling white bucktail jigs over the patch reefs in about 12 to 20 feet of water, just, you know, Sort of hitting it on the way in, see if we can get something. Like I said, these patches are a great go-to stop on the way out, stop on the way in, see if you can hit something. You know, last chance romance type of deal. Right in around 20 to 17 feet of water over the patch reefs. Got these nice structures that go down to about 20 feet and then they raise up to about, you know, five, six, maybe 11 feet in some spots, but it's great structure. It's places where fish hide. So, uh, coming up, the sun's pretty much almost straight overhead, so you know the fish might, you know, go and seek shelter, but you know, it's always a good little stop on the way in. Okay, we're starting to troll up some pillars here. Great, especially when you get some keepers and they're not going Fish right there. 
there. Nice mutton snapper. Let's see if he's a keeper. And of course, he's all of 16 inches, so we're gonna let him go. But still, nice catch over to Patch Reeves. Right, we got a yellowtail snapper over to Patch Reeves. Not a keeper, but still a yellowtail trolling. inches which is what we need so this is patrick trolling skinny shallow water trolling in between you know 5 and 15 to 20 feet of water yes you can troll this water and it is super effective and you will get into the bite gonna take a little bit of practice a little bit of getting to know the area but there are always fish around remember fish hit trolling baits you're tracking down fish that are hunting don't ever forget that about trolling the pursuit of hunting fish this is what i mean right here you got the bright green and the dark blue we're going to troll our lines right in between this stuff this is where the fish are going to hide right over here from the sand to the coral on a fish. 
fish. See what happens here. Getting up closer. And there you have it, man. Some good old fashioned fish and fun. Like I told you, trolling the patch reefs. You're definitely going to get all these fish and more. I mean, wait till the later season comes in, the barracuda start rolling in, the mackerel start rolling in. Wait till you get a hookup on a grouper and you know, you're, you're fighting with that bad boy to keep him out of the rocks. And like I told you, giant mutton snapper. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the best way to fish the patries of the Florida Keys. And that is by trolling them. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.